uh, in the Marietta, Kennesaw area, we, you know, we were talking maybe a radius of 10 miles, you know, I mean, radiating for our, from our meat all. You've got uh, two uh, uh, breweries. you got Red Hair and Burnt Hickory. You've got Naughty Soda, who make a hard soda. You've got a new uh, mm. cidery starting. You've got us. I mean, you've got a whole craft ecosystem. And that's not even going into Atlanta, where there's a bunch of uh, uh, craft breweries and new ones starting up. So this is actually uh, quite an area for craft. Nice. I like I like seeing that happen because that says a lot for you know what's available and you know it means that we'll eventually be able to most people will be exposed to craft beverages rather than so many still kind of stuck in that old timey there's three beers and you know yeah. and you like them because that's what you got because that's what you got yeah and. Mm-hmm. Um, Although I have friends who I have introduced to craft beer, and they're like, "Yeah, I'll take a Budweiser," and I'm like, "You're hopeless. You're just with you're beyond saving." <laughs> Instead of a Bud Light. Yeah, I mean, they're just yeah. beyond saving, beyond it. But best I've been I... able to get them to go to is Yingling, you know. And it's like, there's nothing wrong with Yingling, as as I'm, you know, mass market beer. It's not bad, but it's still a, yeah. you know, mass market beer. <laughs> I, I must say, since we've been doing this, and you know, we were doing free tastings and so forth before we finished everything, um, and just gathering market research and talking to people, that um, I think the number of people that are that we're seeing now that are still virgins when it comes to mead mm-hmm. are becoming fewer and fewer. So I, I think that it is starting to reach the general market, the general population. Um, yeah, and when we started this, I said, I want to make mead a household name. Yeah. You know, so when, when you walk into a house, it's not just, you know, can I get you a beer or a soda? It's, you know, beer, mead, soda, wine, you know, what would you like? And yeah. it's right up there in the same category. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. That's, that's, what, that's why I decided to refocus my business in that direction because... Yeah, partly because I want to see mead be a household word. I've worked 20 years with Got Mead to try to make that happen, and I think I've made a fair amount of progress, you know. But, well, um, you know, the fact s- is we're, we're standing on the shoulders of the people who came before us. Uh, I mean, I, have, I, went out to the, I went out to the Craft Beverage Expo last summer, or last uh, May. Yeah, what'd you think of it? I uh, haven't been yet. Oh, I think it's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a really nice place to go and get kind of a cross-section of the craft industry. And I was, I was brand new. I mean, you know, my son brought up the idea in January. I uh, went through the process of getting the TTB paperwork in by mid-February. And then it was, what in the heck am I doing here? <laughs> and uh, I, saw, I saw that. And going there was really helpful. I met, uh, I met Ben and Becky Starr from Starlight Meadery, mm-hmm. who are really nice people. They're down the road share what me. they're doing. Yeah, they're, they're not far from us either. Um, and, uh, you know, they shared, like, you tell us about Vino Shipper, a few of the other things. I met Mike Fairbrother, we spoke to him for a little while. I went over to Rabbit's Foot. Uh, didn't get a chance to meet uh, Mike Fall, but I met uh, Kelly Long, who's a fantastic uh, mm-hmm. bartender. And, you know, I, I learned a lot from him just watching him do tastings. Yeah. And, and just, in, you know, and, and Mike's, at least, were where he was last year. I don't know if he's still there, but uh, it's really a small tasting room. Yeah. But it's, but it's friendly. It's cozy. It, it fits the personality. You know, reading Sergio's posts, um, all this other stuff on the AMMA site on Facebook and now on their website. And, you know, I take all that stuff in. And, and the Craft Beverage Expo was really good for getting that cross-section, wandering around the hall and, you know, uh, just collecting business cards and, you know, pamphlets and all that. So uh, this year we're going to send uh, Tamara... Uh, my son Brian, our uh, our alchemist, and uh, Dawn's going to go. Okay. Uh, cool. Because it was just too much for one person to take in. So yeah, definitely it's worth it. Plus, I think it's worth going to to support it and hopefully meet some of the others. My my uh, plan was to actually have a table there this year, but my lungs no. had different ideas, so I'll be going next year. I'm not I'm not going. I've actually canceled like five different trips that I had planned because of all this hoo ha that okay. hit me. But. Uh, um, you know, next year I am going to get all. Of <laughs> my husband and I had to have this conversation. He's like, "Dude, you can't walk across the room without getting out of breath. You think you're going to be able to sprint through an airport? Are you stupid?" <laughs> so, get there early. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, my husband's the intel. I'm married to an engineer, so 
Okay. Right. Ultimately, very sensible and the only one in the house with any sense, you know. So, Which I hate. Yeah. Yeah. Not a whole lot of sympathy either, right? Not really, no. He's pretty. <laughs> well, we've been married for 30 years by now. It's just like, yeah, I love you, honey, but you're being stupid, you know. So. <laughs> he says it like it is, which is good because somebody's got to put my feet back on the ground when they when I head up into the clouds. Yeah. But yeah, my plan was to be out there, and I had it all rigged because my sister in law lives like 20 minutes from the venue, and uh, was actually going to be in Germany with her husband, so she needs somebody to watch the house. So I could have like lived in her house. She was going to give me the car, and I mean, all I had to do was show up. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, I know. So, so. so is she going to be gone this year? We're going out there. Uh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> right? no, I, I wanted to go. I really did. I was going to do that, and I was going to do the um, the craft beverage um, conference, the CBC up in Philly. But I just my problem is is that the recovery time for all this blood, lung blood clot stuff that I went through is got me so I have no stamina. You know, so like I yeah. feel okay just sitting here. But if I try to like get up and do anything for a sustained period of time, I feel like I've been dragged through a knot hole backwards, and it takes me days to recover. So I've learned to husband my energy, and and I'm just kind of waiting for the moment at which it all kind of comes back, and I'm back in the saddle, but it's not yet, so. Hopefully it's soon for you. Yeah, yeah. you and me both, man. I'm just I'm oh, about, okay. about sick of being, you know, kind of locked down, but. Well, until then, you can do this radio evangelizing. Exactly. Thing, That's <laughs> great. I can get out there and do what I'm doing, so. Yeah, I mean, I've got lots of other things that I can keep going in my business to run and people to talk to and all that kind of thing, so it's great, but. Yeah, I just I was really excited about going to all these shows. So I'm I'm busily like um, laying out all my expenses and everything. For I'm going to go to the distillers show, I'm going to go to the cider show, I'm going to go to the, you know like all these different shows next spring. I'm not going to be home for like months. <laughs> 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 I'm going to be bouncing all over the country drinking. <laughs> Sounds horrible. Sounds oh, like it's going to be it's just terrible. A terrible job that I have. Just terrible. <laughs> yeah. Just terrible. Somebody has to do it. You have to I'm, do the research. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. You know, boots on the ground. Yeah. That's the only way to go. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, Robin, going back to what you were saying, standing on the shoulders with giants. I mean, when I started all of this, there were like maybe five meteries in the country, you know, and you know, I've I've had the distinct pleasure of being able to watch this industry be born, more or less, you know, and happen. And every day, I'm stunned at you know how much is happening and how much is going on and how many people are getting into it. Yeah, and and what's cool about it is uh, most of the guys. Well, everyone I've known or heard of is really good about uh, when you come and visit. You know, I went out to Rabbit Sweat, and yeah, I didn't spend much time there. I just spent a few hours in an evening, but uh, Kelly was great about telling me stuff, talking about whatever. Um, Brian was out there for uh, business and uh, managed to get up to Rabbit Sweat and spend a little time. Uh, he was also up in Michigan, got to visit Shrams and uh, Bee Nectar. Nice. And, and Bee Nectar is enormous, and oh, they're yeah. all pretty. I remember when uh, they were in like a garage on the backside of a building that looked kind of, it looked kind of uh, um, sketchy looking place, you know. And <laughs> they had a couple of fermenters. I actually got a bottle of mead that they hadn't even bottled yet. I just got they pulled it they they pulled it off the fermenter and gave it to me. And it was like their first. They were open like two months, three months at that point. Oh yeah, I mean we were. Uh... We were bottling and hand labeling days before our grand opening. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> frantically. Oh no, that's part uh, of the. That's part you have to do. That's part of the rite of passage. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a week a week before our grand opening, we were actually hitting the ceiling with corks that were popping <laughs> from bottles that were <laughs> oh, God. That fermenting. So, I mean, we're despondent. I'm ready to cut my throat. Uh, it's just the end of the world. And then we figured something out. And then, you know, within a couple of days, we... We dumped all the bottles and then we did it. We, did, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, have, we have some bottles that probably have been filled three times already. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Um, but, but, yeah, I mean, and I keep saying, you know, someday we're going to look back on this and laugh or cry. I'm not sure which, but uh. for right now, I'm just going to keep putting one foot in front of the other. But the cool thing about guys, you know, looking at the bigger guys and knowing that they started humbly is, A, uh, they did it. Well, you know, so it's doable. Mm-hmm. And B, they're they're right now setting where the ceiling is, or or, or the current ceiling is. Yeah. You know, you've got. Uh, oh gosh, I can't remember what Dollhopper was. I mean, Brian was up there, and he said that it was just big tanks everywhere. You know, I, I don't know, it's like two hundred fifty thousand gallons a year. I don't know, some huge number. Well, he and, uh, Mike, he Fall. and Mike Fall trade off the number one spot every year, pretty much. Yeah, and you look at that and say, okay, there's the ceiling, which means, yeah, and the higher the ceiling. 
the more room there is for all the variety of mead makers. I mean, not everybody's going to want to push to be that big. Uh, we've got some folks down here who came up, and they want to start a nano. And they said, you know, we just we, we want to start a meadery. We just want to make enough so we don't have to work. And they worked on a meadery. We had to help them help us bottle and kind of seeing how things are done. Mm-hmm. And uh, and we're happy to help them. Uh, uh, Blair Housley was on. Oh, Blair, uh, yeah. Yeah, great guy. He was down, uh, again, to helping us bottling and, Blair and on the uh, show. doing that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I was listening. And uh, uh, Blair showed us this cool contraption for uh, shrinking uh, tops on. Oh, and then uh, we let him play with our, <laughs> with our bottler. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just... There's not, there's no competition right now. Uh, there's not enough, there's so much market share out there available, and right. there's not enough meteries. No, uh, no, it no. behooves us to help each other out and build to get the word out. And maybe really, 10 years. I mean, you yeah. you've listened to the, you know, you've listened to enough of the shows to know that most of the big meteries out there, and well, and a lot of the small ones, are in that. John Hamilton said it last weekend. Um, you know, a rising tide floats all boats. We're in this together. And if we help each other, we help the industry. And until we can get this industry to the tipping point, we all have to row together to make it happen. And even across craft, here in the area, I was telling you there's all these different, uh, you know, we're, we're well represented. Uh, I've gone over and helped the Burn Hickory guys bottle so I could learn how they're doing it. Cool. And, they're, and they, they are great about giving us advice about where to get labels, how to get bottles, how to do this, all of that. Uh, the guys at Naughty Soda, we're going to do a collaboration with them because they make a, a root beer syrup. And I want to make a root beer type mead. Mm. Not a your face root beer, but kind of an essence of root beer. All right, for you nice. root beer lovers out there, remember this. The Viking Alchemist is going to be doing a root beer mead. Just saying. I'm making yeah. notes, trust me. Yeah, He's not, actually already developed fan, it. It tastes but... really good. Yeah, yeah. We, we have done a sample batch already. Yeah, but I used an extract from the store, and I don't want to do that. So. Yeah. So, uh, but you yeah, know I it mean, can taste good, so how much better will it be using what the soda company does? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So... Um, and I want to go over and meet the guys at the uh, new cider in town. So uh, everybody's been great uh, helping us out. We went to, you know, we went to their grand opening. They came to our grand opening. So everyone's in the craft industry in our little corner of the world here. It's been real supportive of each other. Nice. Nice. And we have a distiller in the area too. So Ooh. I wonder what happens when you distill mead. Oh, um, ask John uh, Hamilton at uh, White Winter about that. They've done it. Okay. Yep. They, uh, I, mean, I got to taste it. Uh, he had some stuff that he was playing with when he was at last year's Mazer Cup, and, uh, uh-huh. and he was kind enough to let me taste it, and it was uh, amazing. Uh, so, really? yeah, totally. Uh, they're up in northern Wisconsin near Duluth. <laughs> that's where we're, we're from. We were from Wisconsin. Oh, really? Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And you say, okay, so how long have you been in Georgia? Well, we, we all moved on to Georgia in 2003, okay. and uh, we so were here still, for a couple of years. So, so you still damn Yankees. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I like to tell people. I'm that from I'm northern a Michigan, boy. so yeah, I get it, you know. We yeah. actually, uh, we're what they call uh, goddamn Yankees because we went, we came down, we left, and then we came back and never left. So, no, when you say northern Michigan, you're a Yupa. Uh, I went to college in the UPA, going down the road side by each at Michigan Tech, don't you know? Oh yeah, that's, that's oh yeah, hey, that's good. Hey, you know, going down there, we like to drink our beers, oh, yeah. you know, and all that. Kind of stuff. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, so I'd be right at home in Duluth, no problem. But uh, um, but yeah, no, I'd be right at home in the Ottawa Valley too. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Um, I, oh, you ought to hear me when I get to drinking in with John Bryan's at Monroe Honey, um, because oh, he's, yeah, he's down there, he's down there, just across the bridge from Sault Ste. Marie, or not Sault Ste. Marie, from, um, uh, Port Huron, and, mm-hmm. uh, they're like 30 miles, 30 miles the other side of the lake from Port Huron, Michigan, so he's giving me shit, because I haven't got my passport renewed yet, but, um, yeah, I went to college in the UP, and I'm from northwestern Michigan, up by Traverse City, and, uh, but I've been in the south since... I lived in Atlanta from 89 to 91, then uh, was in prison in Pittsburgh for 18 months. Um, not really, but that's what it felt like. I hated Pittsburgh. Um, nothing wrong, Pittsburghians out there. Nothing wrong with your city. I just didn't know anybody there, so I felt really lonely. Um, uh, and uh, then 18 months later, we moved back to Atlanta for three years. We lived first time in uh, Lilburn, second time in... Uh, oh, crap, crap, crap. It's now part of the city, but at the time it was like an outlying town. 
Um, Urban encroachment, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lawrenceville. We lived in Lawrenceville a second time. Oh. Yeah, and then uh, I used to work over Marietta for a cold rolled steel company over that way. And um, you commuted from Lawrenceville to Marietta. Yeah, straight across oh. town on back roads. Oh, you poor stupid. thing. Yeah, I know it sucked. <laughs> Bless <laughs> but your heart. I didn't have to go on.